Good morning, grade 10s. Today I'm here to talk to you about your course selection and your registration for next year. At this point, your period one teachers should have distributed this option advice packet sheet. And I strongly urge you to read through this carefully as it will help you navigate through many of the questions and unknowns that you have in terms of your course selection, your registration, your pathways, and post-secondary options. Right now, I'm gonna go through a PowerPoint presentation with you, and if you pay attention to this, it'll enable you to make informed decisions and choices when it comes to your course selection and your grade 11 year. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna begin with your streams and your levels. So in grade 11 and 12, course codes change. For the past two years, you've been familiar with 2D, 2P, and 2L, but in grade 11, we move away from academic, applied, and locally developed, and it moves to U for university, M for university and college, which we refer to as mixed, C for college, E for employment and workplace, and O for open. Make sure you choose the correct stream or level and it's important to check the prerequisites. So if you're choosing U-level courses, this means that you would have had to take grade, grade 10 academic courses. M-level courses will have required you to take either academic or applied in grade 10. C-level courses requires applied from grade 10, and E-level courses stem from L-level courses in grade 10. So my blueprint, as a refresher, you're going to log into your my site and you click on the my blueprint icon. From the dashboard, you choose high school from the left hand. You can add courses for next year by clicking on the plus with the course. Once you click on the plus symbol, it'll open a drop down menu with course selections. Read the descriptor to make sure that you're selecting the correct course and look for any prerequisites listed. This leads us into the required courses for grade 11. So in grade 11, there are three compulsory courses, religion, English, and math. And you'll also notice that your electives jump from two to five as well. So you might be wondering, which math should I take? This is going to depend on a number of factors. What math did you take in grade 10? How did you do in that math? Did your teacher give you any insight? What pathway are you pursuing? What occupations are you interested in? So generally speaking, if you are university bound and you're looking at programs such as engineering, business, science, then you would be selecting the MCR3U1. If you're college bound and you're interested in tech or the trades, then you would want to take MCF3M1 as the MCT4C1 is required in many cases. If you're college bound and interested in pursuing a program that doesn't involve tech or the trades, then you can choose MBF 3C1. And if you're looking to employment, then you would be choosing the MEL 3E1. As a reminder, last year the English course curriculum changed to a First, First Nations focus for grade 11s. So from English 2D, you can jump into the NBE 3U, which is university level. If you took English 2P, then you will choose NBE 3C, which is college level. And if you were in ENG 2L, you will choose NBE 3E, which is employment or workplace level. I can't stress enough how important it is to get into the habit of checking the prerequisites of the courses you're choosing. So are you on track? 
review your graduation summary under the graduation indicator. You simply click on the view progress to see your personalized chart. Here it'll show what you've been successful in and what's outstanding. This will help determine next steps, including your course selection and maybe even the possibility of summer school, for example. You might be wondering, should I reach ahead? And many of you have already come to see me to speak about reaching ahead and the pros and cons involved. So are you thinking about taking a grade 12 course in grade 11? You want to make sure that you're prepared to do so. Are you ready to take on the rigor of a grade 12 course? The Ministry of Education requires full disclosure of grade 11 and 12 final marks, which means that all attempts will appear on your transcript. This means that post-secondary institutions that you apply to in grade 12 will see your grade 11 and 12 marks. And if you've done poorly on a grade 12 course, it won't matter to them that you've taken it in grade 11. So make sure that you're prepared. Consider your destination. If you're university bound, this will require U or M level courses. If you're college bound, you will need C level courses and possibly the 3M math, depending upon program choices, as I previously discussed. If you're workplace bound, this will require E-level courses, and you might want to consider supported co-op. And if you're apprenticeship bound, get connected with our co-op teachers and guidance. And this would be Mrs. Stocco, Mrs. Susie, and Mrs. D'Alessio. University requirements. Start planning now. Think about what you want to do, where you want to go. You can visit ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca. This is an excellent resource, which you can search by through subject. So for example, if you were interested in business, you could type in business. What's going to come up is every program related to business, um, and it will connect you to what university it's affiliated with. It'll give you a program overview, but most importantly, It'll give you what the prerequisites are to get into that program. So don't forget that grade 10 academic courses are the prerequisite for university bound courses. When looking to apply to university, you need a minimum of six M or U level courses. And required averages of the best six vary by university and program but generally speaking, most are above 75%. So it's important to start researching this now. The most important takeaway from here is when searching programs, the thing you want to pay attention to are the prerequisites you need for programs you're interested in. And then you plan backwards. So you make sure that you're taking the right courses in grade 11 so that you can take the required courses you will need in grade 12. College requirements. So grade 10 applied courses are the prerequisite for C courses. Course requirements for admission vary depending upon the college and the program of study. So here you can visit ontariocolleges.ca to search programs. And you can look up college programs the exact same way that I just explained previously with university. Proper planning. So I just discussed this and I can't stress enough how important this is. If you can identify your post-secondary destination and its requirements, it lets you know what you need to take in grade 12 and then this guarantees that you will have the prerequisites in grade 11. You can also look at your individual pathway plan from my blueprint and you can look at material study in your career studies class. Now changing pathways. Some of you might be wondering about that. Yes, this is possible, but you need to make sure that you have the proper grade 10 prerequisite. So for example, if you wanted to do English 3U, but you took 2P English in grade 10, you would first need to go back to do English 2D before taking 3U.
Your personal planning chart. Use this chart to help map out your pathway and your course selection. And again, notice the increased number of electives that you will need to select. Schism. This is your specialist high skills major. We offer six sectors, arts and culture, business, construction, health and wellness, nonprofit, and transportation. If you have questions regarding Schism, um, you can come and see Mr. Joe Vanangeli in guidance for more details. If you're interested in co-op, you can select co-op in my blueprint. This counts for two credits, so you will only be picking six courses in total. Co-op teachers will follow up with interviews. And as a side note, co-op is required for, for the Schism designation. Again, if you're interested in co-op, you can speak to Mrs. Stocco, Mrs. Susie, or Mrs. D'Alessio in guidance. E-learning courses. So the government expects graduates from your cohort to have studied two e-learning courses. There are 31 e-learning courses for you to choose from on my blueprint under the e-learning discipline. And these course selections are included in your option advice package in front of you. You may only choose one e-learning course per year. Now, if you feel that e-learning is not for you, then there is the option to opt out. The e-learning opt out form can be found in guidance. So your registration is due Monday, March 4th. There's three things that must be completed. You need to complete your My Blueprint course selection. You need to pay the activity fee of $50 for the school year 24-25, and this is paid through um, the school cash online. And you need to verify the information on your registration form. Once you have completed these three tasks, keep the information for your own personal record. Nothing will be collected. So again, Monday, March 4th is the deadline. Please reference the option advice package when you pick your courses. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to book an appointment with me and guidance. Thanks, great times.